All right, here it is. Got it all hooked up. This is the rig that I'm putting it on. The rest of these GPUs aren't running right now. But let's get into the nitty gritty. I've got some preliminary clocking here. As you can see, I'm running my fans at 100%. Uh, my memory, I've only got at 400%. And my core clock, I uh, have on a curve uh, starting at 1200 megahertz uh, as the lowest. I have power limit set down to 84. Right now, my hashing rates are 112. My power consumption is 284. Time is about 19 hours, so almost a full day. Not 100% happy with the results so far. Uh, my 24-hour hash rate on the pool is uh, 102.7. I cannot push this card much harder. And the reason for that are the memory temps. So the card temperature is actually very cool running at 47 degrees Celsius. Uh, memory junction temperature is at 96 degrees Celsius. That's very high. I have a box fan on the GPU right now for me to even be able to run uh, this overclock, which is still pretty high, 96 degrees Celsius. Um, if I take no memory clock, then my hash rates will drop down to about 107 and my junction memory temperature will then drop to maybe 92 or so so you can see it's already starting to go down 90 and 90, uh, between 90 to 92 degrees Celsius um, that's still really hot uh, should comfortably be running this card in the 80s or mid 80s uh, as far as being able to overclock uh, if I'm overclocking the memory to like 1200 max, uh, then yeah, I could see a 92 or 94 degrees Celsius uh, temperature. But just just running the way it is, it fans 100%. I mean, the, these memory modules are running really, really hot. And I did have a card, uh, one of the one of my MSI RX 5600s that had one of the memory modules completely missing. A, uh, a thermal pad and its temperatures were crazy so I thought maybe something like that happened here so I took the uh, um, the cooler off to check the pads the pads were it, were pretty well placed um, they were off of the the memory modules and the Moffets by a, a couple few millimeters so I repositioned the thermal pads uh, there was a set of MOSFETs that looked like it didn't have uh, it, it didn't have any thermal pad on it at all but it looked like it could have had it um, to touch a part of the uh, the memory uh, heat exchanger that is on the card and um, so I put on some thermal pads there put it all back together and I had maybe a, a one or two degree improvement as far as the temperatures go uh, without using my box fan on the card itself so there are memory modules and MOSFETs on the back side of the uh, of the of the die, and there's also thermal pads on the back side of those uh, memory modules that that uh, contact the aluminum backing plate. Now that aluminum backing plate is pretty thin. There's no heat sinks on it. There's no fans on it, and I think that's probably where the majority of the heat is coming from. So. I'm going to test out a theory to uh, continue this video and or I might just make another video about it I'm not really sure but anyways these are my hash rates on the card that's where we're at alright my solution for my overheating memory on this new RTX 3090 has come today and this is what I have figured that I'll do so I got uh, I got these big large heat sinks they're roughly seven inches by two and a half inches and I will stack them like this and then set them on the back of the card like this alright my tape finally came let's get this opened up there you got it 
This is two-sided thermal conductive tape. And I believe it's an uh, inch and a half wide. I believe I, I calculated about two strips wide on this. Looks like it's going to be about one and a half. Right, so what I don't want is I don't want tape in the Okay. Okay, so basically, <clears throat> I don't want any stickiness uh, where the where the back of the die is going to be, you know, just in case, so the rest of it can stick. But once I get this on there, it's probably not ever coming off. But you know, whatever. Okay, I want to do this real time. Uh, overclock on the memory is 4:07. Memory temperature is currently 92 degrees. Fluctuates between 92 and 96. All right, here goes the first one. Okay, it's on. Now well, let's watch the numbers. Look at that. 86, 88. That's phenomenal. That's a big difference. But that's definitely that's definitely what it is. The memory modules that they put on the on the back of the chip, they're just relying on this aluminum backing plate to dissipate the heat. But you know, when you got this stuff overclocked, it's uh, it's not enough. All right, so I'm going to let this run a little bit and see how low it will actually go, and I'll come back to it in a little bit. All right, so this has been running about 10 minutes, and I think uh, 86 to 88 is where we're going to to settle here. Uh, I'm still really happy with that. I, I've got at least uh, a minimum of 8 degrees Celsius cooler with just adding those heat sinks. Uh, so it fluctuates between 8 to 10 degrees Celsius, a better temperature. So I'm, I'm really happy that I did this. Now I'm going to try uh, some overclocks and see where the temperature goes from there. Right off the bat, I'm going to go to the 1200 and, uh, you know, just see what happens. I'm going to reduce the fans down to 90% too. I got a, a lot of fluctuation on the core. Let's uh, give it a little bit more juice. memory temperature is irked up to 90 and I'm at 121.2 okay looks like it's gonna creep up a little bit more it's working on 92 degrees Celsius 
even if I can stay below 94 degrees Celsius at these clocks, I, uh, I think that I'd be happy with that. All right, so uh, we're almost 10 minutes, and it's been fluctuating between 90 and 92 degrees, so I think that's a pretty steady temperature. So there we go. Big heat sink on the back of the RTX 3090, improves about 14 degrees Celsius, and uh, obviously that's with a box fan running on the ginormous heat sink. So let's see what it's going to be without the box fan. So tell me what your guys' thoughts are on this setup. Was it a good idea? Was it not a good idea? Would you have done or thought of doing the same thing? Yes, it certainly makes the card ugly and bulky. And, you know, worst case scenario, you could always put a CPU fan mounted on here somehow and just pull in some more air to, uh, to keep the back side of that thing cool. And I might end up doing that so I don't have to have this fan blowing. And let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, we're creeping up to 98 degrees, <clears throat> so this heat sink's still going to need some some kind of uh, airflow over it to help keep it cool. The next test is I've got a, a little over 22 hours, about 22 and a half hours of runtime on this. Uh, I'm going to restart my rig, run it another 22 hours and 15 minutes or so, and see if my shares are any higher running this higher clock and uh, um, settings. This whole setup here on my kitchen table is just super temporary. Uh, my wife is starting to get a little frustrated with this messing up and taking up all the room. But uh, I just set it up here temporary so I could do temporary settings and temporary run on it before I set it out in its final place to uh, run full time. Let me know in the comments section below if any of you run into the same kind of situation. Okay, honey, I'm just going to set it here. For a day, don't worry, you know, I'll take care of it, and it, it won't be here for a while. <laughs> she says it's been a week. <laughs> okay, so we're in about 22 hours and 15 minutes here onto this uh, test cycle after running the higher memory clocks. My temperature is staying pretty steady at 92 degrees Celsius with the box fan going, and I am running about 122 uh, mega hash at 300 watts uh, and my efficiency per uh, watt is about 406.7 which is pretty good so what I wanted to see the difference from where I was running before <clears throat> at the same hour so I have the log from that first run and what's it 2215 all right so here we are at 2215 and uh, running 112 mega hash uh, 3.97.4 efficiency and I have a thousand thirty one shares and here uh, just moving back up to uh, 22.15 I've got 119 uh, I'm sorry 1,119 shares so it's it's uh, it's a pretty decent increase in efficiency as well as share count um, on the pool it's showing 232 mega hash uh, where this one was showing 187.5. Now that, that fluctuates, so th that's not really um, something that you can count on. But what you can count on are these numbers. So these numbers are really good uh, as far as the efficiency goes. It's definitely better than where it was running, and it's certainly running uh, just as cool as it was before uh, running at 300 uh memory overclock opposed to 1150 so there you go all right thanks for watching i hope this was helpful to you if you'd uh, like to share like and uh, subscribe you know that would really uh, be beneficial to me 
And again, if you like the content, please continue to, uh, to watch as I have a, a lot of content on different subjects. Um, so thanks again. Have a great day. And we'll see you next time.